Today on Eagle Nation News, when was the last time you called an Uber? The company is widely known as a modern taxi service. What about an Uber in the air? Here in Texas, we love preparing for the holidays and almost everyone wishes for a white Christmas. One lucky McKinney resident got just that. Well, sort of. And finally, the basketball preseasons are coming to a close. How did the Varsity Boys do in their matchup against Marcus and what MLB player is coming back home? All this and more today on Eagle Nation News. Good afternoon, Eagle Nation. Today is Wednesday, December 11th. I'm Christina Folsom. And I'm Grant Johnson. By now, most of us have heard of Uber's plans to create a flying taxi system, but is this something we can expect in the near future? Uber claims that test flights for the Uber Air program will begin in select Texas cities starting in 2020, one of those cities being Frisco. With the test site and helipad for Uber Elevate being located in Frisco Station, this city is the first city to test out this innovative mode of transportation. Uber claims that booking your ride is as simple as pulling out your phone, booking your ride, arriving at the helipad, and catching a flight to your desired location. A ride to DFW Airport that would typically take an hour is now only about seven minutes. Fort Worth-based Bell Helicopters has partnered with Uber to create the aircrafts that will soon be used on the test helipad. Bell told ENN exclusively, We have the opportunity to fundamentally change transportation, mobility, and aviation. It isn't just another aircraft, but a different way of flying. No idea is too crazy. We want to be involved with things that are outside of the box. The testing process should begin next year in 2020. Until then, we can only imagine how Uber will transform modern transportation, especially for those of you going to college next year who simply want a quick and easy ride home. Moving on to more breaking local news, Grant, you have some information on how Christmas came early for one family. That is right, Christina. The Spradlin family was surprised to hear that their gifts that they put on layaway for their four-year-old at Walmart and Prosper were completely paid for by Secret Santa. After a hard year financially, they say it was, quote, it, quote, meant a lot for, and for students who are looking for ways to give back to the, holiday, the community this holiday season, maybe consider being a secret Santa for a family need. All it takes is a trip to Walmart. I really love that story. Thank you, Grant. In national news, wildfires in California have decimated ecosystems and caused many to evacuate. But this is no surprise after last year and this year as well. While parts of the state are in ashes, Texas A&M is working on technology that could save the state. Researchers at A&M created a technology that can detect where there's deterioration in electrical equipment, so that way electrical companies know ahead of time when to fix their equipment before it destroys more Californian cities. Now hopefully these wildfires cease to continue. Thank you, Christina. Moving on, so far this past week, we've seen some cold temperatures that may have caused you to break out your winter coat. With the unpredictable Texas weather, weather we've been having, you may be hanging on back up sometime soon. Brenna Gibbons is here to let us know in today's Fast Forecast. Thank you, Grant. The weather has recently been dropping and it is 39 degrees outside, but the real field temperature is 44 degrees with wind blowing at 4 miles per hour. Now, while we may not be getting any snow here, areas around New York and Utah are expecting some of this wintry mix. Now, as the week goes on and the weather will begin rising, with it being a high of 52 today and into the 60s on Friday and Saturday, it should be sunny the rest of the week with an exception of Thursday and Monday. With your fast forecast, I'm Brenna Gibbons. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Brenna. I'm so glad the temperatures are finally going to heat back up towards the end of the week as we head closer to the holidays. Speaking of the holidays and in more pressing news, thousands of North Texas families search for the perfect furry addition to their family each year and specifically around the holidays. But the United States Humane Society wants to warn future pet owners to stay away from a Frisco establishment after an undercover investigation. The findings from this investigation from July to August go on for pages. The barks and squeals coming from these cages might automatically draw you to the puppies, but if you're considering buying a dog from Petland, you may want to reconsider. Because pet stores routinely rely on puppy mills to keep those glass display cases filled with a large number of puppies. 
the United States Humane Society sent a female investigator to the Petland in Frisco as part of their nationwide investigation on Petland stores. The investigator worked undercover for three months. In every Petland store that we've investigated, we found a large number of puppies who were sick, and these puppies were routinely not given appropriate medical care. Unfortunately, the investigator, whose information was not disclosed, contracted the zoonotic disease from a puppy at the store and had to end her investigation early to seek medical attention. And she became infected with the zoonotic disease related to this Campylobacter bacteria that has been linked to a number of Petland stores around the country. The United States Humane Society says that local government officials can pass laws and some North Texas communities already have. Fort Worth has enacted a ban on the sale of puppies in pet stores, as have a number of other Texas communities. And we believe that Frisco should follow suit and do the same. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Grant Johnson. Prosper. A petition to pass a bill in the city of Frisco has received over 20,000 signatures and a hearing has been scheduled with the city to discuss further action. Moving away from the topic of puppies, Casey Boston is here to talk about people, YouTubers more specifically, or the lack thereof. Coming up. Hello Prosper, this is Dr. Jared Corbridge with Corbridge Orthodontics. My family and I have lived in Prosper for over eight years and are proud to be a part of this growing, vibrant community. Uh, here at Corbridge Orthodontics, we are committed to delivering outstanding clinical results, giving you the beautiful smile that you've always dreamed of. Go online and check out our on nearly 200 five-star reviews and see what patients are talking about. I promise that we will take excellent care of you and give you more reasons to smile. YouTube Rewind is one of the most viewed videos on YouTube that recaps the highs and lows of the year right around the holiday season. With the 2018 version having a record-breaking amount of dislikes, people held high expectations for this year's, which actually came out last week. Let's just say there was a shocking reaction. Casey Boston has more in Your Talent Talk, sponsored by Corbridge Orthodontics. Thank you, Christina. Last year's YouTube Rewind is still at the top of YouTube's most disliked videos of all time at a whopping 17 million dislikes. Fans expressed their anger towards the lack of their favorite creators and the use of mainstream creators as YouTube stars. Many people did not like the fact that the opening scene was of Will Smith, a mainstream celebrity that just so happened to have a YouTube channel. In response, this year's YouTube Rewind was pushed to be completely unbiased to avoid the negativity they have received in the past. Instead of recapping the year by featuring creators, this year's Rewind was more of a top 10 type of video and only lasted 5 minutes and 36 seconds, which seems a little short for a video that many people look forward to all year. Currently, the video is at 2.7 million likes and 6.5 million dislikes, so at this rate it may pass last year's video by the time that the new year rolls around. Um, I and specifically thought that the video was a little bland myself, so I can't even imagine what younger kids thought about it that usually wait for this video to see cameos of their favorite influencers. Did you like the fact that YouTube chose to go in a different direction this year, or do you hope to see them go back to their typical rewind style in 2020? Be sure to take our poll on Twitter at Eagle Nation News and let us know what you think. That's all that I have for you today. I'm Casey Boston. Thank you, Casey. I know that whenever I first watched the video, it was a little bit bland, and I thought it was really nothing unique at all. Yeah, yeah no, whenever I first saw the video, I thought YouTube was almost being a little petty, because they were like, you know, since you guys do it better, no better, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, so it sounds like you guys want them to go back to their old style. Oh, definitely. 100%. I, I miss the old rewind. Me too. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. <laughs> Ornaments hold a special place in the hearts of many American families, especially in Texas, where everything is bigger. Mick Messer, an 18-year-old McKinney resident, hung his ornament with the mindset, go big or go home, just like many others, except he really did go home, or to a house, that is. Deshai Dekama reports. Decorating for Christmas, while a typical family tradition, is something that 18-year-old Mick Messer takes pride in. The whole season is just so jolly. Every year, the White House gives people the chance to decorate for the holiday season, and Mick was one of the lucky ones who were chosen this year. Anything's possible. I never thought I would get in, but um, again, never say never, I did. He says it doesn't matter what he's doing, he just wants to be in the White House. It's the people's house. It's not, it's not the Trumps, it's not 
anyone else's house, it's the people's house. So I just want to be, um, be a part of helping out the people's house. And so he did. I spent a lot of time putting lights on the trees. They are real trees, and um, so we start in the back and go up each branch. So a 14 or 8-foot eight foot tree could take a day, a day and a half, or even two days, depending on what size tree it is. The fun was not over, even after decorating. All the volunteers are accepted back for a reception the following Monday after Thanksgiving. For Mick, this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity will make this a Christmas he will always remember. It feels pretty amazing to be able to help such a magnificent event. Mick only has one word to describe how he feels after experiencing this opportunity. It makes me feel accomplished. And he plans to return if invited back next year. I'm Gashada Kama reporting for Eagle Nation News. Prosper. For anyone who wishes to follow in Mick's footsteps next year, be on the lookout for the application around November of 2020 on Facebook at the start of the Christmas season. And the Christmas season isn't the only great season in December as basketball is about to get ready to start their regular season. The Varsity Eagles took on Marcus as one of the final preseason games last night. Maggie Hale has the results from the game and special coverage on an MLB player in today's Game Time Sports Update. The Prosper basketball team took on Flower Mound Marcus in the arena last night. The boys kept the game close and left it tied at 21 going into half. Once the fourth quarter started, Prosper emerged as the dominant force on the court. The Eagles took the win 52-45. to Mondo Battle led the team in scoring with 21 points, and we saw a great defensive performance from juniors Grant Shaw and Jathan Jackson. While we continue to see athletic excellence in Prosper's current students, even after they graduate, Prosper athletes are making their mark. Steel Walker, who graduated in 2016, went on to play baseball at the University of Oklahoma. In 2018, he became one of the top MLB prospects and became the 46th overall pick in the draft. The White Sox signed him a $2 million deal, and he played under their organization until today. Walker is going back to his roots and will now play for the Texas Rangers after a trade deal for Nomar Mazzara. If you want to hear more sports like this, be sure to tune in every day for your sports of the week. Back to you guys at the desk. Congratulations to Steele as he embarks on his new athletic journey. But that's all the time we have for you today. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Christina Folsom. And I'm Grant Johnson. Live long and prosper. <laughs>